Holy Spirit, we just thank you for what you are doing in our midst. Thank you for what you're doing in our midst. We just acknowledge your presence here. Thank you that you're alive. We thank you that the veil has been torn down. Thank you that your glory is resting in your people. Thank you that hope has been restored. Holy Spirit, I pray and I ask that you will reveal Jesus this morning. I ask that you will make Jesus tangible this morning. I pray for awakening of hearts this morning by your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. Zechariah 4. Zechariah 4 verse 6. You can tell you, you can just listen. In fact, I'm going to start by verse 1. It says, Now the angel who talked with me came back and wakened me as a man who was wakened out of his sleep. So I pray, Holy Spirit, that this morning you will waken us up. I love it. It says he was wakened as a man who was asleep. So he wasn't physically asleep, but the Holy Spirit opened his eyes. The angel of the Lord opened his eyes. And this morning there's going to be awakened, and there's going to be eyes, there's going to be hearts, there's going to be spirits, there's going to be awakened to what God's going to do in this place. But the scripture that I really want to get to is found in, in verse 6. And it says this, So the Lord said to me, This is the word of the Lord. I want you to say, This is the word of the Lord to me this morning. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And I want to say to you that what you carry is greater than the mountains that you are facing. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will become real to you this morning. I pray, Holy Spirit, that we will have a revelation of the access of heaven that we have available to us. And this morning I want to speak to you about the power of God. I want to speak to you about the power of God. And the power of God is found in the person of the Holy Spirit. This morning I want you to speak. I want to speak to you about my friend. I want you to I want you to become acquainted with Holy Spirit. I want you to be reacquainted to Holy Spirit if you already know Him. I want, if you don't know the person of the Holy Spirit, that this morning you will be introduced or reintroduced to the person of the Holy Spirit. Whew! <laughs> My first encounter with the Holy Spirit was before I even knew Jesus. I was 17 at the time, down in Nature's Valley, and I was busy drowning, literally in the sea. <laughs> I was drowning in my sin too, but I was drowning in the sea. And I just cried out, and I said, God, you either have to save me or take me. I can't take it. I, I mean, I was crying out to God without having a, rela a relationship with Him. And the next thing, a peace just came on me. And the next thing I knew, I mean, at this, that time I was already in the sea for about an hour. They sent helicopters from Plate to come and fetch us. I was a lifesaver. We, we did the sea rescue. I got one guy out. Um, my friend got another guy out, and I went out for the third guy. And at that time I was so tired, I started cramping. So overwhelmed, I could I mean, the sea was just mad. And uh, the helicopter got the one guy out, and, and I just realized I didn't have enough strength. And I just said, God, if you save me today, 
I'll serve you for the rest of my life. And I can't remember much, but the next moment, I was literally in a shallow water, and a guy just walked in through and got me out. And I was miraculously healed. And I was just, I was just saying, God, thank you. And that was, yeah, I was, when I was 16 or 17 years old, I didn't serve God after that. My second encounter with the Holy Spirit was when I was sitting in a barn in Cape Town. Some of you have heard my story. I got saved. I mean, I knew about Jesus. I grew up from across the road from the church. The Duomini, the minister, was staying next to us. And Holy Spirit came and he encountered me and made Jesus real to me. For the very first time. I didn't just know about Jesus, but I felt him. And in a moment, my life was in so much darkness, so much chaos. There was so much self-hatred, so much loneliness, so much inferiority, so much stuff in my life. And in a moment... In a moment like that, the Holy Spirit came and He made Jesus real to me. And I said, Jesus, I want to serve you for the rest of my life. And I pray that this morning that we won't just know about Jesus, but that the Holy Spirit will come and make Jesus real to you. And I want to tell you that it's only the ministers, only the ministry, the only the person of the Holy Spirit that can make Jesus real to you. Your Christian life is not possible without the ministry of the Holy Spirit. At that time, my life was in chaos. There was so much stuff in my life. But in a moment, the Holy Spirit brought life into my darkness. The Holy Spirit gave me purpose. He gave me a sense of belonging, of love. And love just flooded my life. And I surrendered all and everything of my being to Jesus. Because of one touch with the Holy Spirit. The very first mention of the Holy Spirit in the Bible is found in the very first chapter of Genesis. I'm going to read it to you. Genesis 1 verse 2. It says, The earth was without form. That word without form literally means it means without order. That word means chaos. The world was in chaos. It was out of order. There was no structure. There was no order it was void, and the darkness was in the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And it's amazing, the, the Holy Spirit was hovering over the darkness. The Holy Spirit was hovering over chaos, and in that moment He brought beauty, perfection, and life to an earth in darkness. An earth that was formless and in chaos. And maybe you're here this morning and your life is in chaos. Maybe your life is in darkness. Maybe there's areas of your life that are in darkness or is out of order. And I want to propose to you that that situation of your life, that area of your life, the Holy Spirit is hovering over that area. And that area or your life is a perfect breeding ground for the Holy Spirit to bring order, to bring life to bring perfection, to bring beauty. Because I want to tell you about the Holy Spirit, that He longs for you, He desires for you. There's no hopeless situation that He can't turn around. And it's the Holy Spirit that brings perfection and order and light to chaos. The world is in chaos and in darkness today. Not because of political systems. Not because of the work of the devil. But it's because of sons and daughters who doesn't know how to reveal the Holy Spirit. He longs for us. He longs for us to know Him. What we need to understand is that uh, the person of the Holy Spirit, he's not the it, he's not, he's not just the Spirit, but he's a person. He longs for you. He desires for you. And he longs to know you. 
And it's not by might, it's not by power, it's not by intellect. It is by His Spirit. 1 Corinthians 6, 19, it says, Do you not know that your bodies is a temple of the Holy Spirit? <laughs> we are temples of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can live anywhere. The Holy Spirit can choose to habitate any place, but He says, I want you to be a temple where my Spirit can dwell. That you don't just belong to yourself anymore. You don't belong to this world, but you belong to me. I want to possess you. I want to, do, I want to pour out my love, my passion on you. Romans 5.5 5 says, for, the, for hope does not disappoint. For the love of God has been poured into our hearts, into this temple by the Holy Spirit. Whew! I can't tell you how much He loves you. His presence and His power brings peace to confusion. The presence of God, the Spirit of God brings healing where there's pain. He brings peace where there's confusion. He brings comfort where there's trouble. And the Bible makes it very clear in Zechariah 4 that it's not by might, it's not by power, it is by my Spirit. Nothing in this world, nothing in your life can be accomplished through human might and power. It's only by the Spirit of the Lord. There's no power on earth. There's no political system. There's nothing that can transform your life but by the Spirit, says the Lord. No Bible study can do that. No worship song can do that. It's only the presence of God. Bondages, addictions, sin patterns, depression can only be healed by the Spirit of God. Darkness, demonic oppressions, demonic can only be expelled by the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. <laughs> I want you to think about it. What, think about it, what, what would have happened with the early church, if the Holy Spirit didn't come? Well, the answer is really simple. We wouldn't have a church. We wouldn't have the early church because without the Holy Spirit, Jesus can't be revealed. Friends, it is the Holy Spirit that reveals Jesus to you. It is not the book by Bill Johnson or reading about Catherine Kuhlman. It is the Holy Spirit that reveals Jesus to you. It is the Holy Spirit that reveals Jesus to the world. Your relationship with Jesus is impossible without the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Your relationship with Jesus is renewed by the Holy Spirit. It is the person of the Holy Spirit that makes Jesus real in your life. That's why daily you have to cry out to Him. Daily you have to say, Holy Spirit, Make Jesus real to me. Even now, I want you just to say, Jesus, make, Holy Spirit, make Jesus real to me. <clears throat> when, I, when we lived in Asia, I had a friend. He was, he was from Nepal. He was a doctor. Well, at the time he was a student. He was studying to become a doctor. This was the most humblest, most sincere guy that I've met in a long time. And Arun loved Jesus. He had such a compassion for people. And his desire was to be baptized by the Holy Spirit. So he started reading this book. He told me, he says, Can I, someone gave me this book called Good Morning Holy Spirit by Benny, D Benny Hinn. And he read it. He stayed up all night and he read that book. Now listen, I, this is not about Benny Hinn. You can have your opinions about Benny Hinn. But my friend Tarun read that book and the next day he came to me and he was shivering, he was shaking. And there was something different about Tarun because Tarun had an encounter with the Holy Spirit that made Jesus real to him. And I remember every week, me and Arun, we used to walk in the wind. It was in the winter at the time. It was <laughs> minus five degrees. We were walking in the snow around our university campus, and we were just praising Jesus. We were just worshiping people. 
we were just praying for the campus. We were just praying for lost souls. And this Arun, this friend of mine, was so possessed by the Holy Spirit. And the more we just started speaking about the Holy Spirit, we were just like two coals being set on fire for Jesus. And we just couldn't get enough of Jesus. We couldn't get enough of prayer, of worship, of just spending time with Jesus. But I want to tell you, it wasn't by might, it wasn't by power, it wasn't by our effort. It was by the Spirit of God. We can't know Jesus without the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that renew our relationship with Jesus. You see, I knew about Jesus. I didn't serve Him, but I knew Him. But it was only when the Holy Spirit came in that barn, Cape Town, that He made Jesus available to me. That Jesus became real to me. In Titus 3, 5, it says, He saved us not because of the righteous things that we had done. Arun, my friend, was a righteous guy. I mean, he, he served God. But it is because of His mercy, He saved us. Listen to this. Titus 3 verse 5. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that washes us. It is the Holy Spirit that brings rebirthing and renewal into our lives. And what we need more than anything else is a rebirth, is a washing, is a renewal by the Holy Ghost. Because it is Him who washes and renews us. It's not the Bible study. It's not coming to church. It is a person of the Holy Spirit that keeps your relationship with Jesus refreshed and renewed. We cannot, we cannot walk with Jesus apart from Holy Spirit. <laughs> when Jesus promised He will never leave us, He will never forsake us, the Holy Spirit was the fulfillment of that promise. And where the Holy Spirit is, there is Jesus. See, you can read the Bible until you are blue in the face. You can know the Bible back to front, but you're never going to get it without the presence of the Holy Spirit. You're never going to understand the Scriptures without the Holy Spirit. Now again, I want you to think about it. Paul the, Paul the Apostle, a guy who wrote two-thirds of the New Testament, one of the heroes of the faith, Paul is a great example of this. Because Paul knew the Bible. He knew the Bible more than anyone else. He knew the Bible as Saul as Tarsus. But yet he never saw Jesus in the Scriptures. Paul was a theologian, but he never saw Jesus in the Scriptures until Jesus was revealed to him on the road to Damascus when he encountered the Holy Spirit. And it says that immediately after that, Paul started to preach Jesus Christ. Why? Because of the presence of the person of the Holy Spirit that he encountered. There are so many people who know the Bible better than I. There are so many people that know the Bible better than you and me. But they don't know the Lord. They don't know Jesus. They can't see Jesus in the Scriptures. The Pharisees, there's Pharisees in our midst today, like there was in the early days. They know the Bible. They know all this stuff, but they don't see Jesus in the Scriptures because they don't know the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is absent from their lives. And the point that I'm trying to make is that knowledge can't come from human reasoning. Knowledge of God can only come through encounter with the Holy Spirit. It can only be imparted by the Holy Spirit. I had another friend in Asia. He's a pastor of some of the churches in China now. He was an atheist at the time when I met him, Arun. I had the privilege of leading his wife to the Lord. And Tarun gave his life to Jesus after probably two years of praying for him, praying for his salvation. 
And he resigned from the Communist Party and he says, I want to give my life completely and wholly to Jesus. And Arun appeared for three months. Literally, he, ap- he appeared from the face of the earth. And I didn't see Arun for three months. And after three months, he came back and he says, um, Kone, um, for three months, I studied the the Word of God. I read the Bible back to, to front. And he said, I got so excited and I just want to go out. And the Holy Spirit said, Arun, you've read the Bible now and your own reasoning and your own understanding, but now I want you to go away for another three months and I want Holy Spirit to teach you. And when Arun came back from the three months, he was possessed by the Holy Spirit. I couldn't teach him anything. When we would pray, he didn't, he didn't have anyone to teach him. He didn't um, have any book that he read. He only had the Bible, that, and the Bible was revealed to him through encounter with the Holy Spirit. And the room became sold out for Jesus. Not by might, not by power, but by my Spirit, says the Lord. Jesus said in, 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 in Acts verse 1, verse 8, Jesus said, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Now what does it mean to be a witness? Well, first of all, you can't be a witness unless the power of the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Who's going to listen to you? Your friends are not going to listen to you. Your family is not going to listen to you. Your school is not going to listen to you. What impact are you going to have unless you are filled with the very presence of the Holy Spirit? See, if the disciples who spent three years of their life with Jesus day and night, if Jesus said, you need to wait, don't go, don't do anything until you are baptized with the Holy Spirit, if the, if, if, if the disciples who were closest to Jesus, if they couldn't be trusted with the assignment unless they had an encounter with the Holy Spirit, what make us think we can be of any use without the encounter with the Holy Spirit? Jesus was saying, the assignment that I've got for you It's not just impossible, but it is illogical. And what I'm going to require from you is going to require help. Because you can't do it in your own strength. You can't do it by power. You can't do it by might. Only by my Spirit. And you have to wait until the Holy Spirit comes upon you. I'm going li- to... Look at one of a portion of scripture that I just love, and I want to encourage you to go and study it this week. Go and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal it to you. Go and read um, John 14, 15, and 16, 17. Go and write, read the whole book of John, in fact. <laughs> and just ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, make the scriptures alive to me. Holy Spirit, revive something in me. Give me the gift of hunger. Holy Spirit, reveal Jesus to me. John 14 this is Jesus he's giving his final instructions before leaving earth in verse 16 he says and I will pray the father and he will give you another helper everyone say helper I love that man I just love it that he is known as the helper And he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. I love that the Holy Spirit was given to us to help us, to assist us. The Holy Spirit is my helper. As I worship, he helps me to worship. As I preach, he helps me to worship. In my family, as a husband, as a father, as a friend, he helps me in that. Holy Spirit, help me to love. Holy Spirit, help me to walk in peace. Holy Spirit, help me to host your presence. Holy Spirit, help me to be a witness. Holy Spirit, help me to reveal Jesus to the world. Holy Spirit, help me to see Jesus in the Word. 
See, without the Holy Spirit, life is such a struggle. <laughs> life is such a struggle. That's why I never, never gave my life really to Jesus. I gave my life properly as a young boy, but it, it, it was such a struggle. It was an effort. I probably did it because everyone else did it until I encountered him and he made Jesus real to me in a bar in 1996. Without the Holy Spirit, life is such a struggle. It's so difficult. In fact, in Romans 8, it says, He even helps us in our own weaknesses. I think in, in Romans 8, 26, He helps us in our own weaknesses because we don't even know how to pray. But the Holy Spirit helps us. And He makes intercession on our behalf. Every day when I pray, Holy Spirit, help me to pray. Holy Spirit, thank you that you've given me a language. Lord, I don't even know how to pray. I don't even know how to lead this church. Holy Spirit, help me. Help me. It's not something I can earn. It's just something to be received. I want to tell you that when we live with awareness of His presence, when I acknowledge that His presence is here with me, when I walk and I a yielded life, I will never be defeated. I will never be defeated. He said, you will never leave me nor forsake me. Whenever I speak, whenever I lay my hands on someone, whenever I walk into an environment, I will have authority. Every day and every place you go, just say, Holy Spirit, thank you that you are with me. Wherever you go, whatever you do, whatever you say, say, Holy Spirit, I acknowledge. I acknowledge that you live inside of me. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you are in me and upon me. And you will always have authority. You will always have peace. Whenever your awareness of a situation becomes greater than your awareness of him, you have to step back in that place and say, Holy Spirit, I'm so sorry. I got distracted from what I'm facing right now. But I thank you. I acknowledge your presence in my life. That's why I need, need him. That's why it's so important that we invite him daily into our lives because the Holy Spirit, the presence of Jesus carries your answer. <laughs> the presence of Jesus, the presence of the Holy Spirit creates an atmosphere of faith where anything is possible. Much of our Christian life, we are still trying to engage the world through human reasoning. The answer is not in the problem. The pro answer is in the Holy Spirit. And He lives inside of you. The very Spirit that raised Jesus from the grave is available to you. And He longs for you. He hovers over you. He hovers over your situation. But we need to start cultivating that practice of just resting and in practicing His presence. That scripture goes on, it says, I will pray the Father and He will give you another helper that He may abide with you forever. See, He never leaves. He never leaves. The Spirit of truth. Woo! The Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because He neither sees Him nor knows Him, but you know Him for He dwells with you and He will be in you. See, friends, not only is He our helper, but He's also the Spirit of truth. <laughs> and when you, not only is He my helper, when, when you live with the revelation, with the understanding, when you are led by the Spirit of truth, your life becomes a witness to the world. Your life becomes a witness to the world of what righteousness is, of what sin is, and what God's judgment, judgment is all about. In fact, Jesus says in, in John 16, verse 8, He says, And when He has come, He will convict the world of sin. Now, where does the Holy Spirit dwell? He dwells inside of me. So it says, The Holy Spirit inside of me will convict the world of sin and of righteousness. And of judgment, of sin because they do not believe in me, of righteousness 
because I go to my Father and you see me no more of judgment because the ruler of this world is judge. Not only is the Holy Spirit given to me, but the Holy Spirit also manifests Himself to the world around me. So when I walk into an environment, people are convicted of their sins. It is said of, of Smith Wigglesworth that when he lived in Britain, he would literally be on a train, and he would people in the train, in the train carriage, they were just minding their own business. Smith Wigglesworth would just stand there, and people would start falling on, on, in their knees and repent. The train would literally go through train stations. The people on the platforms would just fall on their knees and just repent and start crying out to God. Why? Because Smith Wigglesworth hosted the presence of Jesus. He's not just my helper, but he's a spirit of truth that convicts the world of sin, of righteousness and judgment. When you walk, people should be convicted of darkness. They should be convicted. They should have a revelation and encounter with the goodness of God. That when people in your presence should experience His presence. I once walked in Hemingway's, and a long story short, a Muslim guy started following me through Hemingway's. He literally stalked me until he cornered me at the top there at Woolworths at the escalators. And he asked me, do I know you from somewhere? What is it about me? Where do we know one another from? And we, I didn't know the guy. And then he says, what is it about you? I said to him, I'm a son of God. And he says, that is it. There was something about you. I'm a Muslim God, but tell me about the God that you serve. I believe it was nothing special about me, but it was a conviction of the Holy Spirit that was ministering through me. One of my passions in life is a God that people in my presence will experience your presence. That people in my presence will experience your love. That I don't have to even speak to them, but I will be the message. Friends, we, will, we need to live with this conviction that daily, daily I encounter the presence of God. I'm more possessed. I'm more drenched in the presence of the Holy Spirit, I daily I encounter Him more and more and more, that I become an encounter and I start giving that encounter to other people. I love the Holy Spirit because I know when I sat in a bar, it wasn't by might, it wasn't by spirit, but it was when I encountered the Holy Spirit that everything changed in my life. Everything changed in my life. I saw, I see what the Holy Spirit can do in communist and dark, godless environments. I've seen what the Holy Spirit can do in, in, in campuses in Europe where nobody loves God. And daily I say, God, I need your help. God, I need your help. All of this It's through the power of the Holy Spirit. I don't know if you realize that when you speak, you have the power to break sin over people's lives. When you speak, you have the power to break demonic struggles over families. When you walk into your school, the spirit of truth in you has the ability to change atmospheres. At Pentecost, when Peter preach the gospel filled with the Holy Spirit. You need to understand that the crowd that he was preaching to was the very crowd that was saying, crucify that man. Away with Jesus. Because they thought they knew the Scriptures. They knew they were offended by the ministry of Jesus because they thought this is what God is like. They didn't know the Holy Spirit until the Holy Spirit was poured out and all of a sudden they said, what, what must we do to be saved? And in a moment, because of the ministry of the Holy Spirit, the environment of a whole region, a city, was changed. And the church was birthed. When you speak, sickness has to flee. When you speak, hopelessness has to go. When you show up, Holy Spirit shows up. You 
I want to encourage you to start living conscious more than you've ever done it before that you carry the Holy Spirit. Sometimes I'm just standing in queues and I'm like, you know what, I, I have an opportunity now to either get irritated because I need to be somewhere else and there's 10 people in front of me or I can stand and just say, Lord, thank you that your presence on me is affecting the environment around me. And I start looking at people and I just say, Lord, thank you. I don't have to speak to people, but they're encountering, unless God tells me, they're encountering your presence. Thank you that this, your kingdom have just invaded this environment. And when the enemy wants grumpy to jump on you, you just say, I'm just going to allow Holy Spirit to dispel grumpiness in me. Woo! You see, when you live conscious of the Holy Spirit, you gain a whole new expectation where everything becomes possible, when he, where the illogical becomes logical. Think about how many people just cry out daily. Maybe you are crying out daily. Lord, help me. Set me free from sin. Lord, I just want to live from you. It is not possible in your own sincerity. It's only possible by His Spirit. Do you know that one of the, 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 the functions of the Holy Spirit in your life is to break the power of sin in your life? In Romans 8, 2, it says, through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit, the law of the Holy Spirit that gives life has set me free from the law of sin and death. It is not in my nature to, to sin anymore. It's not in my nature to crave things that is not from God. It is not by my effort. It's, Lord, thank you. It's by your Spirit. In other words, the Spirit of God in me breaks the dominion of sin in my life. David said, let, let sin not have dominion over my life. That's why your intimacy with Holy Spirit is your chief assault against the enemy. Whew. Holy Spirit, possess us. Holy Spirit, come and fill us. Make Jesus real to us. Pour out the gift of hunger amongst us. Open our hearts, open our spirits to receive more and more of you. Wow. Don't receive it by your emotions. Don't receive it by your intellect. Receive it like anything else in the kingdom by faith. Holy Spirit, thank you. Thank you that I'm receiving your word right now. Thank you that I'm stepping into a new level of intimacy with you. Thank you that you're not just another God, but you are the living God. You are the Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. And you are moving powerfully in me right now. You are moving in my neighborhood. You are moving in my family. You are moving in my school. Lord, I thank you that I'm encountered for other people to experience you. We're going to start landing the plane. <laughs> We're going to start landing the plane. Woo! So, when Jesus was landing the plane, he had incredible ministry time, three years here on earth. And then he gave his friends, he gave the disciples, he gave the early church a promise. And John 16, verse 7. Oh my word, go and highlight it in your Bible, memorize that scripture. Let it become your bread, your life. He made a promise and he told his followers, Nevertheless, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage. Everyone say, it's to my advantage. It's to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper, there it's again, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Now I want you to put yourself in the shoes of the disciples. When Jesus said this, I mean, we like, woo, Holy Spirit gives us an unfair advantage. The disciples weren't excited as you and I. In fact, it says, the verse before, it says, sorrow filled their hearts. 
Jesus is giving them an incredible promise and it says they, they, were, they were sad. They were sorrow filled their heart. They didn't receive that word. Jesus, how can this make sense? These guys had access to Jesus 24-7. They sat across the table from Him. They did life with Him. They saw all the incredible miracles that Jesus did. Imagine Jesus was real to you like Ian is real to me here in the front seat. It's like, Jesus, sorry, I'm preaching this incredible message. Thank you that you are my chief encourager. But I don't understand that. What does what, what that part of the Bible mean? And Jesus just said, well, this is what I mean by that. That's what the disciples had access to. Jesus, I, I'm, I've got this situation. Um, what do you think I should do? And Jesus would just say, this is what you need to do. Imagine that. You can speak to Jesus face to face. So you can imagine, you can understand why the disciples were confused. Jesus, how can this be good that you are going away? What are we going to do? In fact, Jesus, what we need to understand is Jesus, when He came, He came in human flesh. Jesus also had to go to the bathroom. He couldn't be everywhere all the time. <laughs> In fact, it says that sometimes even Jesus, he had to withdraw. He was, he, was, he was just one person. He had to withdraw even though he was God. He, had to, he said he had to go and hiding and just spend time with Papa alone. He realized that, man, there's just moments where I actually need to withdraw. I'm a bit people spaced out and... I'm just going to slip away, not tell everyone, just so that I can be with my Father. Jesus was the manifestation of God in humanly form. Holy Spirit came as a mind and emotions and the power of God. Jesus could only be at one place at one time, but when the Holy Spirit came, the disciples couldn't read minds. They couldn't like, what's his thoughts? They had to ask him. That's why he says it's to your advantage. That's why Paul says in, in 1 Corinthians, you have the mind of Christ. He goes on, he says, it is not by might, it is not by power, it's by my spirit of the, go the Lord. I haven't given you a spirit of timidity. I haven't given you a spirit of fear but a power of love and a sound mind so that you can start thinking like Jesus. So that you don't have to, oh my word, Jesus is a God adventure this morning, but I'm at Hope Alive and He's going to be there next Sunday. I've got a question I only can ask Him next Sunday. No, He's available to each one of us. Oh my word, God only speaks through the pastor or the minister. I have to wait in a prayer line so that I can ask Him what I need to do or how I need to pray. No! Jesus says, that is why it is to your advantage that I go away, because I can only be one and one with you, but when He comes, you will all have access to all of me. Wow! That is just good news. Imagine revival start breaking out in Port St. John's. Man, and praise God for social media. We start hearing about the stuff that's breaking out there. Oh my word, people are ra being raised from the dead. Um, mass salvations are happening. Um, the demonic people are being set free. And Jesus is on a road trip. He's going to hit Ports and Johnson. And then he's going to go to Mtata. And he's going to go a little bit inland. And then maybe in a month's time, he will be in East London. And on my word, he's going to visit three other churches before he comes to our church. And maybe we all need to just come together because we are the unity of the body. Maybe we must just approach Faith Church so we can use their dome because that's going to fill all of us so we can just go and listen to Jesus there. See, that's how it was in the early church before Pentecost. But Jesus says, hey, you think... The ministry with me was amazing. Wait until my spirit is being poured out. 
Then you don't have to wait for him to come to Port St. John, St. Tata, since the East London. No, you can have as much of me right now. Imagine you, you have a desire, God, move powerfully in my school. Move powerfully in my school. And you say, Holy Spirit, thank you. I'm a son of God. I'm a child of God. You are moving powerfully in me and through me. I want to see my friends, my teachers, my colleagues be set a ablaze for you. And at the same time, you don't realize it, but maybe in another great, another kid is having a similar thought. Because Holy Spirit is not just speaking to you now, but he's speaking to that kid too. And maybe he's speaking to one of your teachers. And they're starting to have similar thoughts. And all of a sudden, man, you start speaking to one another. Man, I've got this burning desire in me. It's like, oh my word, did you have the same thing? It's like a, a, a couple of months ago, me and Jen, we were just, there was something in our spirit that's just been burning. We need, to, we need to do something with the youth. We're hearing all the testimonies around the world. Holy Spirit is doing something powerful amongst youth. What can we do? And we started praying and we said, listen, let's just make our house available. We started speaking to our kids and like, man, yeah, there's a similar stirring in our hearts. And we're like, Holy Spirit, you're obviously speaking to us about this. And we were in another conversation with Paul and Simon. And it's like, oh my word, God's been speaking to us about this. But we were thinking, well, our house is too small. And we said, well, you can use our house. And then God started speaking to another guy here. And he says, you know what? I'm a teacher at one of the schools. There's a stirring that the Holy Spirit's been put in my heart. And you know what? I've got the same design. We just started coming together. We don't have to wait like the church before Pentecost for Jesus to show up. No, we have the very mind of Christ. He's given us the ability to think powerful, brilliant thoughts. Not by might, not by power, not by the man of God, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Waiting for revival is an excuse to be powerless today. You are revival. You are revival. You might not feel it. You might not have seen the fruit in your life, but that doesn't deny the fact that you're a temple of the Holy Spirit. Keep on praying, keep on believing, keep on declaring, keep on imagining what your life in a world around you can look like because you're a carrier of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Yo. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Just close your eyes. Thank you. Just close your eyes. Just close your eyes. Just ask the helper to come. Just ask the helper to come. Ask the Holy Spirit just to reveal to you who you are. Lord, I pray this morning that you will make Jesus real to us. Make Jesus real to each and every one of us. Lord, we need you. We need you. Father, as in Zechariah, awaken us as a man who is asleep. That is not by might, it's not by power, but it's by your spirit. Just breathe in. Just breathe in the atmosphere of heaven. Just breathe in. Breathe in. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Beautiful, Holy Spirit. Beautiful, Holy Spirit. Just come. Beautiful Holy Spirit, just come. Let it be 
according to our faith, according to the declaration that we sang earlier, that the veil has been torn. We are running into your throne room. Let your glory fill this place. Let your glory fill this place. If you start feeling the Holy Spirit moving in your heart, just stand up. If you can start feeling His tangible presence, just stand up. Lord, we just welcome you. We just welcome you. We just welcome you. Make Jesus real to us. Make Jesus real to us. Come and move amongst us. Come and move amongst us. Come and rest upon us. Rest upon us. Every day, every day, just wake up. Just the Holy Spirit, thank you. Thank you that You've made yourself so vulnerable and so accessible to me. Every moment, turn your affection to him. When you go to the shops, when you go to work, when you go to school, just say, Holy Spirit, thank you that you're going with me. Acknowledge his presence is here because he's in the room. My presence, Corneas in the room, because I'm here in your midst. And it's the same with Holy Spirit. Just acknowledge that. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.